Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Sorry, I've been gone for a little bit. I was in Europe for a wedding, and now I'm going to evacuate, or evacuate, get, get out of the way of this hurricane, so I might be gone for a few days. Um, but I will start by saying I hope everybody in the, uh, in the more northern part of Florida stays safe. Uh, looks like a big one. But anyway, guys, today I'm once again answering some of your questions, such as how am I able to sell Rolexes cheaper than most other dealers, and are luxury movements, quartz movements, uh, everlasting if you do proper maintenance? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing my Breitling Chronomat Evolution. My Neo Vintage 90s watch, absolutely love it. And also, guys, a bunch of new watches have hit DelrayWatch.com, including a Rolex GMT Master with the discontinued black bezel. This one's full box, full papers, and for the condition, the best price in the country. We also got in the very rare and newly released H. Moser Pioneer in the 40 millimeter case. So a significantly smaller watch. I own the bigger size. So if you guys always love the Pioneer but thought it was too large, here is your chance. And we got the extremely rare Gerard Perigo Laureato Arabic dial, limited to 28 ever made. And we happen to have one of them. By far the least expensive one, not only, well, the only one in the country, but the least expensive one in the world. And all that and way more at DelrayWatch.com, the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch. Link in the description below. Anyway, guys, these are the questions you asked me on my Instagram account at Federico Talks Watches. A few times a month, the Q&A picture pops up. When you see that picture, feel free to ask your questions. When I get enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. And we start in no particular order with John Pan. And he says... A Fed, are luxury quartz movements like Cartier, Patek, and AP everlasting if you do proper maintenance? Yes, they absolutely are. Even standard Swiss Ronda movements are everlasting. They can be fully serviced. Uh, they, they still need to be lubricated. They need their coils cleaned. They need service just like a mechanical watch. Maybe less so, but my point is they're definitely serviceable. Just be careful that when your battery dies, that you remove the battery from the watch because if it does leak, if the battery, battery acid leaks in the movement, it could cause some serious damage. But yes, luxury quartz movements are definitely everlasting and definitely do need care. Vintage Yoda said, Federico, are Leica watches any good? Would you buy one? This is an interesting question. So I actually like Leica cameras. Uh, I've owned a couple. But Leica as a whole uh, is a brand that very much has a cult following. And they know that. And they are massively overpriced. Even their cameras. Now, I knew they were overpriced when I bought one because I wanted a Leica. I wanted to experience it and I did and then I sold it. Yes, they do things very well. It's a very high quality product, but their watches, like their cameras, do not justify the price. Leica watches are very high end. They're very cool. Would I own one for the price? Absolutely not. They also are kind of milking the watch market for the Hodinkee salvage denim, you know, Tribeca living Ben Clymer wannabes. So they kind of made a watch. I'm not saying they made a bad watch. They made a pretty good watch, but it's got a Leica price tag, which they have no business doing in the watch world. Leica should stick to cameras if they want to sell overpriced things. D Griffey 649. Hey, Fed, are there other countries that make watches as good as the Swiss and the Germans? Or are those the only two places to look for hierology? There are. The only significant one, even though there, there's pockets everywhere, but the only significant one is Japan. Japan is right up there with the Swiss and the Germans. Grand Seiko is a great example, or their higher end line, Credor. But Japan has also had a renaissance of um, independent horology manufacturer. Look at um, Lotech, another fantastic one that is sold out 
forever. I mean, I think the Japanese make fantastic watches in high horology, and they probably have the Swiss beat in entry-level horology, in my opinion. S. Goga. Fed, I thoroughly enjoy your channel. Thank you. I often see Rolexes listed on your site to be much lower than other sites, probably because you think it's a fair value. Are the other sites artificially trying to keep the resale of Rolexes higher? This is interesting. I think it's a mixture of things. I think, I think they are trying to keep resale higher because 99% of other dealers only sell Rolex, Patek, and AP, whereas I sell very few Rolex because I diversify. I sell a million other brands, so if Rolex market takes a dump for me, I could care less. They're like 3% of my business. Whereas for other people, they can be 60 to 70% of their business, so it's in their interest to keep Rolex prices high. But more importantly, I also think it's a business philosophy. I'd rather, see, I, I see Rolex as like a loss leader for me. I see, I'd rather sell them very quickly and make a minimal amount of money so I can acquire a customer. When I get Rolexes on my site, it's not necessarily to make money, even though I make a profit. Of course I do. But it's more to attract people to my website for them to become a Delray customer and then to eventually buy something where I make a real margin, have them come back, build a trust with Delray. So even though, of course, I make money on Rolexes, I sell them cheaper because I'm willing to make a much smaller margin just to get people to come check us out. And that's our philosophy of business. Last but not least, Captain Tob. Hey, Fed, I recently saw the ZRC collection. What's your take on the brand? I like the quirky design, but not sure if the value is fair. ZRC is like a quirky French dive watch company that they've recently revived. Um, they're not inexpensive, but if you look at competitors, they don't really exist. Uh, it's a brand that has had history. Their cases are very different. You know, bezel locks, crowd at 12, hinge straps. I mean, considering there are no other competitors to what they do, I think you got to give them a little bit more slack in terms of pricing because they're the only ones making what they make. So based on that fact, I don't think they're massively overpriced at all. And if you buy one pre-owned, you can get a pretty good deal. Because if you want something that looks or feels like a ZRC, you have no choice but to buy a ZRC. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe. And for all you Floridians, you know, if you guys live in the Tampa, Sarasota area, please evacuate. Thank you so much and take care.